Hey guys, I had seen some cards from other demonstrators and other very crafty people um, on how to make the flip or the pop and twist or pop and fold cards. So the first one I made was this one. Just so cute, of course, playing in the rain stuff. And then I wanted to try and make a different size. This is, they're obviously the same size, but this is vertical and this one's horizontal. And so there's our cute little owls that are only gonna be around for a little bit longer, but I wanted to make one about that size. And there's that one. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of them. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, I've made a few now, so it's getting where I don't have to look at my instructions all the time. <laughs> um, I will have these on my site right here here's one for the vertical and here's one for the horizontal and i also will have a qr on there so if you scan that with your phone you can it will automatically open up this video okay so let's get started okay starting with the vertical here's our three pieces of cardstock this one is four and a quarter by 11. this one is three and a half by 10. and this one this is the pop and twist one this one is eight by three and a half Okay, so first we're gonna do, we're just going to score them. This one, it's your simple uh, standard card base. So it's scored at five and a half when you're opening it that way. Okay, this one, this, this part right here is this, okay? So we're gonna score that at two and a half. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, I'll fix that. Two and a half, five, and seven and a half. Okay, so we got that. Then this is our, um, the pop and twist mechanism. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna do it on the short side like this. You're gonna score it at one and three fourths. That's the middle of it. Okay. Move that off to the side. Then what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna use my grid paper. Okay. I'm gonna line it up on my grid paper. You can see eight inches long and my ruler, here it is. What you're gonna do is you wanna measure it from two and a quarter to five and a three, and five and three quarters. I'm having a hard time here, here we go. All right, so you can do it two different ways. Here's two and a quarter right here. You can mark a little line on this part and a little line on this part, and then five and three quarters, mark a little line, mark a little line. I found this to be a little easier for me I have this, these rulers, I forget what they're even called, but I have several of them and I use them quite a bit. All right, two and a quarter, so right there. And I just, with a pencil, and then five and three quarters. Okay, so there we got that. And then, instead of using my Simply Scored, I'm gonna use this, my trimmer, and I'm gonna use the score blade. Sorry that my lights are shining on there. All right, so hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna go from one to the other. You're making an X, okay? So line, line, in the groove here, line, line. Can you see that? Okay, then we're gonna do it on the other side. You're making an X. Oh my God. Okay, hang on. Okay, I used the wrong blade on that, but that's okay. So I scored like that, okay? The lines right there. You can barely see them because I kind of erased them. There to there, there to there. All right, so this is the most important part of the video, of, of the card. You want to pinch these in. You want those to go down. You want the top to come up. See that? And it makes an arrow. 
All right, so there we have all our pieces. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bone folder and I'm going to get these all really tight. All right, so I just, what I always do, especially for a card like this, because it makes it pretty thick, I just use the bone folder. Make sure those scored marks are good and as flat as they can be. Okay. I always put my paper underneath the grid paper because when you use the bone folder, it can make it kind of shiny where it's hitting. This, some of the, it won't even matter because you won't see it. But um, I just, I, I've always done it that way. Even with my card bases, I put them, this is, this is the heavy white, the thick white. Not the basic white, it's the heavy white. Need to, needs to be pretty sturdy. Okay, so there we got all our pieces. And now we're gonna start assembling. I've already made them for you guys, not to make my, um, video too, too long. So what I used for this um, is the Pretty Birds. I love this one. Um, the, the sentiment on it, here's the front of it, right there. Isn't that cute? Um, so all Pretty Birds, but the sentiment is from the Happiness Abounds. I used Happy Birthday and then Friend both from that. Um, the Bert here, I'll show you the, the dies for it. It's, I got it a long time ago and this is the first time I use it and I absolutely love it. There's the front bird cage, and then the ones I used on here is that right there. Um, I used brush metallic um, for those and I did put them on adhesive sheets beforehand because they are teeny tiny, very thin, very intricate dies. It would have been really hard to glue those on uh, without that. Um, the paper that I'm using, all that pretty paper, is one of the celebrations. It is, what's it called? Dainty Flowers. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paper. And I love that it worked with, with these. Pretty Birds, it's got all these stamps. I used just about all of them, um, but it doesn't have any sentiments, which I kind of like that because it means it can be used with so many um, other things. Okay, so we want to start adhering everything before we start putting all the pieces in. Okay. Okay, so there's our front. This would just be a pretty card all on its own, but I just, I loved that I, I just, to come up with uh, things to put on the inside. All right, let's see, how are we going to, I think we're doing it like that. You don't see a whole lot of it when it's open. You, I mean, you see a lot of it, but you don't see the whole thing. Okay, and look, that's pretty on the back too. All the papers like that, front or back. When I have classes, sometimes people look and sometimes they change it, like from what I made as my card, sometimes they use the other side, which I I love that. I have several people who do that. Sometimes they, cha they change the card a little bit and I love that. It, it, I always tell everybody, if you wanna change it, feel free. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're gonna do this guy. You don't want it to be right on the edge where that is because you want to be, these to be able to close. 
and you don't want them to be too thick, like adding embellishments or something to them. I mean, I mean, obviously these are not just direct stamped on there. They're actual die cuts and everything, but you don't want anything too, too thick or it's not gonna sit right. And obviously the, um, the size of this will fit into a um, regular envelope. It might weigh a little more, so you, I don't, I don't know if it exceeds the first class um, weight thing. I think it's like 16 ounces for it to be able to do first class. It might be more than that. I haven't weighed it, but it just depends on what you do with your card. If you know, you never know. Okay, so now I'm gonna go get the tape that I'm gonna use for this guy. Okay, so for this part, this is the, the, the mechanism that is going to make all that move when you open and close. You wanna use um, good glue. Uh, the Seal Plus that Stampin' Up! has works perfectly. Mine ran out before I made this video, so I can't use that. Otherwise, I would use that. But the Terran Tape, um, also works, okay? You just want it to be something that really holds it down. All right. You want it a little bit below the seam there, just not too far down, but just a little bit and just center it as you can. Okay, okay, so I peeled that. That's my tear and tape. And you can move it down a little to the right. There we go. All right. All right, so that's the first part, and here's the second part. We're gonna put tape on top of that. I'm just gonna do it the exact way I did, three lines of it, and then I'll show you when we get back. Okay. Okay, so there, there's that what we're going to do is we're going to close it and then you're going to see how magical it is okay here we go oh my gosh this part is moved on here i'll have to fix that ta-da look at that so cool and then we're going to add the, this part to it and you'll see how it all works okay so now we're going to put this on there you want to fold it up like this okay and you're gonna lay it on there hopefully you can tell because it's sticking up a little bit obviously because it's because the mechanism is already in there and again i just take my pencil and i just draw a line you just want it centered okay and what you're going to do again it, um Seal Plus from Stampin' Up would work and it might be a little easier and less time consuming than this, but I don't have any right now. Okay, you're gonna do one there and then you're gonna do it down here. You're gonna do it diagonal. You could do down here and up here, it, either way, it'll work. All right, tear those pieces off and then that this card will be done. Okay, so got my tape on this side and this side. Open it up. Okay, ready? Ta-da, look at that. Is that not so cool? 
sometimes when you first put it together, gotta, yeah, sometimes you just have to make sure, but I mean, this is like working perfectly. There you go. All right, that's our vertical one. Now we're gonna make, it won't be the same as this, but it will be the same measurements. Okay, so then our next one, since it's going to be a horizontal card, we're gonna do eight and a half by five and a half. I'm using Night and Navy here. That's for the base, the card base. Then for the panel strip, these are different. These are different measurements because they're not as big. They don't have as much room. So when I first tried to do this, I made the measurements exactly the same as I did in this one. And when you do that, it hangs out on the bottom. So I don't wanna do that. All right, eight by three. So here's eight by three, and then we take off a half an inch because it's eight and a half. All right, so eight by three, and then another eight by three. I could have used these. I don't even know why I got out a different sheet of paper. Oh, well. Take off. All right, so there's our three for that. All right, scoring tool. Obviously for your card base, you're gonna score it at four and a quarter. Okay, for the panel strip, it is going to be two, four, and six. Two, four, six. Okay, so it's a little different than um, the other one, obviously, because the size is different. All right, so here's our pop and twist or pop and fold mechanism. This is eight by three, just like the other one. You're gonna score it at one and a half. That's in the middle. Okay, then we're gonna do what we did with the other one. This time we're gonna score it at two and a half and five and a half. Okay, so here's the two and a half. Draw my line and five and a half. Okay. You see it? All right, so here, get my trimmer out again. And I will remember not to use that one. So let's see if I can zoom in on this so you guys can see it maybe a little better. I'm gonna take one line, get it into that groove, and then move this one so it's in a groove too because you want it to be diagonal. That's what the lines are for. Okay, got one there, then we flip it and do the other one. See the X there? Okay. All right. All right, so again, I'm gonna get my phone folder and just Get all of these where they're gonna lay as flat as possible. I had seen a lots of the pop and twist cards that were the vertical, the one the the first one I made. Um, I had not seen this size, and so when I started putting it all together, like I was telling you, oh, the dimensions weren't right. They were sticking out of the bottom of the card. And I didn't even, I didn't even want to look it up. I wanted to figure it out myself. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm sure you could probably find that somewhere, but I'm kind of competitive in that way that I'm like, it's a challenge to me. So <laughs> this is how, this is what the way I came up with. Okay. All 
All right. There we go. Okay. Now we're just going to assemble everything like we did before. This time I used um, different types of stamps. This one's really cute. I really like it. Okay. This is, I'll just, there's going to be the front of my card. And then here's the little things to go on the panel. Okay. Super cute. This is Seaside Bay. It's from the current mini catalog. Here's the dies that go with it. Um, it's, I, I stamped the bird and the clamshell. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then I die cut. Well, I, and I stamped these little, little shells that are on the inside, but obviously for the, these, I used the brush metallic again. And then there's this one, these two, um, dies, that one, and that one that you can see I use them everywhere. The paper that coordinates with this is really one of the prettiest papers I've ever seen. It is so, there's so many, like almost every single one has shine on it. I mean, it's really cool. So like I said, it's like, like look at that one, it's so shiny. And then the other side, it's not shiny. This one, oh, that's the same one, sorry. <clears throat> look at that I love that one I still haven't come up with an idea for that yet and then there's a lot of them that you can you can it, you, it works with the die cuts I actually stamped that one but you could die cut it out of the paper so this paper made it look like a beachy background and see the back of it is that shininess so since I had extra because I didn't use all of it for my background that's what I die cut the little I don't know, I want to, it's not grass, but like, whatever that is. I, that's what I use. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's that. So it's shiny too. So lots of shine on here from the paper and everything for the little pearl there. This also goes with the, the sweet. It's flat adhesive back pearls. That's what I put on the inside of that one. So, oh, look at that. I got a little heart on the back of it. It's from one of the cards that we made in my last classes. All right. Okay, there's the front of our card. Then the inside, I just have basic white here. I think I may cut this to be on the top and the bottom of it, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and glue them down. If I decide to do that, it won't be hard to get it on there. Sorry, I'm having a hard time looking at it. I've got glaring light here. All right. There's, like I said, there's just so many, there's so many pretty papers in that. That's what I thought of. It's like, ooh, I'll put, I'll put one of those like at the top and the bottom. It's good to have the white too because then you can. That's what you can write on. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to do what we did before. Actually, yeah. I'll. I won't make you sit through this. I'm going to glue these onto here, and then we'll get started with this. Okay, so there we go. That's our inside thing. And again, we're going to do, it'd be so much easier with the Seal Plus, but I don't have that. I even, I've already ordered it, but I just, I've been wanting to make this video for so long. My last card that I posted on my site, I said, I'm working on a video. Hopefully I'll be done this weekend. Well, here it is Monday and I'm just now getting to the video. A little crazy. If it hangs over, I just cut it off because I don't really think you want it to hang over. You don't want adhesive showing up other places inside this card because it might mess with the how it's Hopefully that's straight. All right, then this one.
Oh, the sentiments on this card. Um, oh, I can't show you the top yet, but they're they're not actually they're not from the Seaside Bay. They're from Friends Are Like Seashells. I have that happy birthday to my beautiful friend on the front, and then Friends Are Like Seashells. You collect them along the way. This is from this. It's in the main catalog. Um, Stampin' Up, they do. They they love the sea stuff, which I love because I love the sea stuff. So shows you can use them together. All right, ready. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. So easy. And we're gonna do it just like we did the other one. Get it on there. And just do a line. All right, all right. So I got my heat adhesive on there. That's why I have the, that's why I do the pencil marks. So just so I remember where to put it. All right, here we go. Okay, there we go. There's our front. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I mean, I just, I just think so many people, if you gave them a card like that, it was like, they would, I mean, I was showing it to some of my um, customers and friends and stuff, and everybody's like, whoa, I mean, and it's just, you know, it's just not that hard to do. Um, it does, it makes it, especially this one, like these, I mean, it makes them pretty thick. Uh, this, it kind of, it's thick too, but it's sort of not as bad. I don't, I don't know. It's still, I had to weigh these, but anyway, you, you can, they still fit into an envelope. It might be a little snug, but, um, you might want to put it in a bigger envelope, but I just think somebody who got a card like like this or any of the ones I've shown you, I just think it's it's really cool. So like I said, maybe this on the top and this on the bottom, I'm not sure yet. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, it's, it's not that hard. And again, like I said, you will have, I will have on my website, I'll have these and it'll but it'll have a QR code. So if you scan it, it will pull up this video so you can watch me do it. Um, once you do it a few times, it's it doesn't it's not that hard. It's just sort of I mean, I always I even I keep my own <laughs> my my own instructions. I keep those next to me and you know, and I keep them next to me so I can look at them and remember the measurements, where to score, where to, you know, all that stuff. So um, all right, well, if you have any questions or if you want to reach out to me, please do. Have a great day.